Welcome back inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for a rapid reaction presented by Byers Auto. Coming off Ohio State, now in the college football playoff field of four, will take on Georgia in the Peach Bowl on New Year's Eve at 8 p.m., one of the last remaining four to play for a national championship. That's the 40-year event, Tim, Tim May. That's Andy Baxter. I'm Spencer Holbrook. Fellas, Peach Bowl. It's here. It's it's not here, but it is here. Ohio State now has an opponent, knows who it will be facing, knows that it is in the four-team field. Uh, just first thoughts, Tim. We already did a little video. Now that you've heard Ryan Day speak, first thoughts on uh, Ohio State, Georgia, and the Peach Bowl. Yeah, you know, it's, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just saying I thought they were going to be in the Peach Bowl all along this year. Uh, they're going in the back door, so to speak, but the door leads to the same chamber, which is the Peach Bowl. And uh, – like Ryan Day said, there, you know, there's no uh, excuses here. I mean, you don't, you don't say, hey, sorry, I'm in, I'm in the college football playoff. You step right in there like you belong. That's what it sounds like he wants his team to do. And uh, he definitely thinks they're deserving. Uh, they won, as we talked about earlier, they won every game by double digits except one. And then those two long touchdown runs at the end of that Michigan game really skewed that game, in my opinion, and his too, but maybe still pointed out some problems with this defense. But the bottom line was, the committee didn't blink twice. Uh, they put Ohio State in ahead of two loss Alabama, most deserving. Uh, shouldn't it, should not have even been, in my opinion, a conversation. And it doesn't sound like it was much of a conversation. So uh, when you get a new lease on life, you get a new shot at a goal of yours, your overall goal. Obviously, one of their goals, which was won the Big Ten Championship, is gone. But the chance to play in the college football playoff, to have a shot at the national championship, and to perhaps get to play the team that beat you this year again, which is really putting the cart ahead of the horse. Uh, wow, how could you feel any better about having new life? Yeah, Ryan Day made it very clear that it would be awesome. It would. He said he, that everybody's thought about it, to play Michigan in the national championship game. That's Saying that is just crazy on a video, let alone thinking about coaching in it if you're Ryan Day. But they can't do that right now. They can't be worried about potentially Heck playing no. Michigan. This is full steam ahead on... You're trying to break up a dynasty at this point. If Georgia wins another national championship, it's, it looks like the beginning of a dynasty, back-to-back -back championships. Ohio State stands in the way of that, and Ohio State needs to act like it stands in the way of that. And Ryan Day said he's going to play loose, he, but he knows the challenge that Georgia presents, and he was very respectful of what Kirby Smart's built down there. you got to focus on now, and I think that was apparent talking to Ryan Day today. You know, They want to focus on this matchup, not what's ahead, and even this week before they – even knew that they were going to be in the college football playoff. These practices, he said, were college football playoff practices. They weren't practicing for the Orange Bowl or any kind of bowl game they might have been in. It was under the assumption that we have this opportunity. You know, we might get in, we might not, but we're going to prepare as if we are getting in. And that was the mindset, and that was very clear to us as he was speaking this morning um, about that opportunity, which he said, you know, 48 hours ago or 72 hours ago, they didn't have. Now they do have. I also thought it was interesting he broke down his experience this past week. He said it was an awful week, and it's not hard to figure out why. You know, to lose to Michigan in that way at home for the first time since 2000, to hear all the insults. You know, he said he didn't really listen to those. He, did, he put his phone away. Even when he was uh, the night of the USC game, he said he was on a recruiting visit in Cincinnati. He was coming back. He was listening to the first half of that game on the radio. Just really, really fascinating to think about how to process all that information as the coach, not let it get to you, and then flip the page, and now you have the opportunity to prove everyone that you are the right man for this job and that you can, can lead this program to the, what you want to do. Wouldn't you like to have been in that car when Utah finally showed signs of life <laughs> and seen how, how Ryan Day reacted? I mean, you know, they were down 17-3 in that game and came back and just bushwhacked. Bushwhacked USC and Caleb Williams. I, obviously, Caleb Williams got hurt, but your, your whole, like you said, his whole uh, – focus on getting this team back to where he thinks it belongs was in other people's hands. Cal Whittingham's hands, uh, Cam, Cam Rising's hands, uh, as I call him, Cam Bad Moon Rising yeah. for, for USC. Uh, it was in their hands and to have someone else come through for you, you know, you can short shrift it all you want, but they're in this, they're in the college football playoff final because Utah took care of business and yep. uh, should forever be grateful. Says he hasn't sent uh, Cal Whittingham anything yet. Yet. But uh, I understand Kyle Whittingham likes to hike. Uh, he likes to ride mountain bikes or whatever. Send him something good in that, in that genre. You know what I mean? Not just a case of wine. Uh, <laughs> but the bottom line is, 
just think about it, man. Somebody saved your bacon. Now it's your turn to get another shot. It's, it's got to be a really weird kind of feeling and also euphoric. Yeah, for Ryan Day, it's almost a chance to rewrite the tenure because a lot of people are talking about, oh, he's five years in, it's one and two against Michigan, or four years in, one and two against Michigan. Uh, you know, is it, what's, what's the future of this program look like? Well, the future looks like the college football playoff. They're one of the four best teams, so they got in the playoff. And now if Ryan Day can go out and slay the dragon that everyone thinks is the invincible Georgia and then go to the national championship game and potentially beat Michigan in what will be what could be the greatest national championship game matchup in the history of the sport. I don't I mean, know. George Alabama might argue that, but go ahead. George Alabama isn't the rivalry that Ohio State Michigan is. I know, so, but I'm just saying. So, you know, the greatest matchup in the history of the sport would be to have the game in the, na- in the national championship game. Yeah. You don't get to hang a Big Ten banner, but Ryan Day, I, I would assume, guys, I'm, I'm not going to speak for him. You're jumping ahead. I would assume that Ryan Day would rather hang a national championship banner than one of the Big Ten championship banners anytime. Ohio State now has a chance to do that. And obviously it starts with Georgia and Kirby Smart. And like I said, Ryan Day talked a lot about Georgia in that press conference today. Uh, Talked about the respect he had for Kirby, uh, building it up. Uh, talked about Stetson Bennett being good. Talked about those tight ends who, Tim, you, we already talked about it. Yeah. Talked about their defense, the freaks, freak athletes everywhere on the field. Uh, they know that this is going to be an immense challenge. But I think now that they have that new perspective of we weren't guaranteed to be here, I think Ohio State will present a lot of challenges to this Georgia team too. Yeah, and the thing about it is when you're a – what's it, what would, Andy, you already wrote a – posted a story on this. What are the, they're an underdog by how much? Seven points. Yeah, when you're a touchdown underdog, you have no reason to do anything but go in and let it all hang out with your offensive arsenal. If you get uh, your primary, two primary running backs back enough to be declared healthy, et cetera, I'm talking about Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams, go in there and let it all hang out. Uh, if Matt Jones can come around from that high ankle sprain, I think they got exacerbated, uh, or uh, not exacerbated, but you know what I'm talking about. They got uh, exposed there in the Maryland game. If he can get back to close to 100%, right on down the line, there's no reason not to go in and let it all hang out. And there's all kinds of reasons to have learned lessons defensively about the way you played Michigan. You went in bound and determined to stop the run, left your defensive backs on islands, whether it was man-to-man or some kind of weird zone, doesn't matter. Man-to-man, zone always ends up man-to-man in the last place, or in some cases, no man versus man. pardon the expression, you got to fix that because Georgia with 12 personnel is going to expose you all day in that regard. You've got to trust your players to make plays without a lot of gimmicks. And uh, we'll see if they get that straightened out defensively. But yeah, there are all these things they're getting a second shot at that Michigan exposed. And I think Georgia plays a lot like Michigan in a lot of ways. And uh, so that's, that's, that's what I would think they feel best about is this is this was not our finest hour just wait and you might even say that it was actually an hour that it wasn't the finest hour yeah I mean it was a a four-point game in the third quarter uh you know Ohio State had a fourth down didn't Ryan Day confirmed that was a fake pun he said he didn't want to talk about it and it over the next hour of real time Ohio State got as you like to say Tim got bushwhacked yeah and so you could literally say that that game last Saturday wasn't their finest hour. They obviously have to play so much better to beat Georgia. They've got to be but, better offensively. I mean, they've got to be better offensively. I mean, we can talk about the defense, and that's what you're talking about. you got to score points, man. Yeah, and so, you know, if Ohio State would have beaten Michigan, and this is a really weird thing to say, but if Ohio State would have beaten Michigan, there were, there were betting lines out there on Ohio State-Georgia National Championship game that had this as a three-point spread. Mm-hmm. Once we saw that, collapse against Michigan now it's a seven point spread and everybody thinks oh Georgia's just going to walk over Ohio State no this is this was slated to be a potential national championship matchup from from last March to now well now we just get it in the semifinal because Ohio State had a bad hour and so you know now you just roll the the helmets out there and see what you can do because I think this Ohio State team is one of the most talented teams in the country talent wise not team wise but talent wise overall how does it matches up pretty well against Georgia, and I think this is going to be a, a fascinating and wonderful matchup to watch. Yeah, and Ryan Day said that they're expecting everyone to be healthy with the exception they're not sure about Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, and that's the one player he keeps getting asked about. He was asked about on ESPN today. He was asked about today in the press conference here in the Woody. You know, the, the question is, will he be available? He's had the hamstring problem all year, and if 
you're talking about talented offenses. They already have so many guys, but that's a guy that can really just change any game, especially a college football playoff game. And, you know, the update is expected to come. We don't know. No. Nope. Maybe days, maybe weeks. I mean, we're just going to have to keep asking and trying to figure out if he's available. But otherwise, I mean, when you look at this team, they've got the talent to go toe-to-toe with anyone. Now they have the opportunity to do it against an SEC team just with the way college football is trending, too. I mean, it's about the Big Ten. It's about the SEC right now. I think you can make a big statement not only about where this Ohio State program is but where the Big Ten is. Yep. Having three teams in the Big Ten East be in the top seven in the final college football playoff rankings, have a chance to go and beat Georgia not only – in a college football playoff game, but in Atlanta, I know it's not a home game for them, but in some ways it kind of is. Oh, sure. And I think you can make a big statement there. So everything's in front of Ohio State now. It's no longer out of their hands. It's in their control once again. Yeah, what, what a statement, though, by the Big Ten East, the beast. I mean, crazy. Three teams in the top seven, two in the top four. Uh, it, and and uh, all we've heard about all year long is the SEC going to get two in again. Hey, they might get three in if Tennessee – you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, South Carolina, as we talked about earlier today, the great giant killer, you know, the yeah. great slayer of SEC wannabes uh, and, uh, and Clemson for that matter. But it is amazing, in my opinion, the last three weeks of the year, even when Ohio State didn't need help, it was getting it, you know, from yep. a result standpoint, mainly from South Carolina, which knocked off Tennessee, knocked off Tennessee, destroyed Tennessee and beat Clemson. Now there was no debate. I mean, yes, Lawyer Saban was out there lobbying for his team, and I don't blame him for lobbying for his team. I blame him for being – I blame some networks for giving him continuous mouthpiece to lobby for his team when this is not a great Alabama team by any stretch. But uh, the bottom line is, Ohio State, as we said earlier, won 11 games by double digits, lost one game by double, double digits. I mean, you know, yeah. 23 points, 22 points. But the bottom line is they deserve to be in this game because they lost. Their loss was to the number two team in the college football playoff rankings. And uh, their number one win was over Penn State, which ends up number seven. Alabama's number one win was against Texas. Are you kidding me? Mediocre Texas. So there was never, I don't think, an argument in, in that college football playoff committee about who should be number four if, in fact, USC got beat and basically got bushwhacked, and uh, it all happened. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. It reminds me of 2007 to a certain extent. I'm going to talk about this on my podcast this week, about how everything kind of fell into place after the Ohio State couldn't stop Juice Williams sneaking and Illinois winning uh, in Ohio Stadium and came back and got to play for the national championship against LSU. This has a lot of those kind of, feel, kind of feeling to it. Yeah, have fun in the Sugar Bowl, Nick Saban. Your backup quarterback will be able to see a little bit into the future. Ohio State will be having fun in Atlanta, playing against Georgia in the Peach Bowl. Uh, Ohio State would much rather be in the Peach Bowl than anywhere else, uh, maybe other than uh, out in the desert as the two seed because that would have meant that they would have won the Big Ten. But there's a roundabout way of getting to the end result. Ohio State will play Georgia after all. Uh, we all hope to see this matchup. Now we actually get to see it. Uh, all right, let me interrupt you real quick before you go. Do you get the sense if Ohio State had won out, would it be the number one seed? No. You don't think so? No. What about you, Andy? I don't think so either. Because what reason would you have to move Georgia down? I guess the well, one Well, I mean, I mean that, this committee really likes Ohio State. It right. does like Ohio State. I mean, State. it's pretty obvious. You know who else it likes? Well, it likes Georgia. the SEC. It likes the SEC in well. Georgia. But, I mean, you could have looked back on Georgia in a couple of weird games this year and said, okay. I mean, now that's – you know, everybody's doing all this 2020 stuff. I'm just – curious this committee really likes ohio state it and, does uh, you know and now ohio state's got to live up to that yeah and again ohio state will get the chance to face georgia in what should have could have been not should have been one versus two uh throughout the entire process if ohio state had taken care of business against michigan we're going to find out if ohio state can take care of business in uh enemy territory down south uh tim may will be there andy baxter will be there i'll be there spencer holbrook uh Peach Bowl, fellas, New Year's Eve at 8 p.m., like one Peach versus Cobbler. four. Number one, Georgia versus number four, Ohio State, for the right to play in a national championship game. Ohio State has a second lease on life, as Ryan Day said. Leonard Monroe's got a lot to get to uh, in the next 25, 26 days before this thing kicks off. Uh, again, Tim, Andy, I'm Spencer. Thanks for watching the latest Rapid Reaction presented by Byers Auto. We will see you guys back in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center for full coverage of Ohio State, Georgia in the Peach Bowl.